Good afternoon. <laughs> I don't know, after looking at the guards here, if Patino's, if Patino's 70 million is going to be enough. <laughs> they always like to say in basketball that it's not how big you are, it's how big you play, but we'd like to start with a little bit more than, than Andy and Jamie. I was a little concerned today coming in, uh, not having ever been with you in your 31 years of conventions here and your celebrations, that uh, what the dress code would be coming out here to beautiful Arizona. Uh, but then when I got here and I saw Jamie walking around, I realized that everything would be fine no matter what I wore. <laughs> I come from a family that is not athletically uh, oriented. My parents, my dad worked three jobs as, uh, uh, you know, until he retired about uh, seven or eight years ago. My mom was a librarian. We didn't have a television growing up. and uh, you know, It was a situation where their interests were music and literature and art and education. And, and, and to have Coach Wooden come into our house and start talking about this, I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to come be part of something that's very special. And I made that decision to go to UCLA and it was the absolutely most uh, uh, important thing that I had ever done because uh, I realized as I went through my basketball career that it was not how good I was as an individual. It was how good the other guys on the team were. The, uh, how good we could be as a unit thinking and dreaming and having those dreams come true. And when I see little Brian out there and I see those big eyes, I can see myself out there writing these letters to these guys who never wrote back, but that didn't matter because my dreams were happening for me. Now, I can remember when I was in seventh grade, about the age of Brian is right now, and my dad, who worked three jobs, as I said, was driving me to these endless and meaningless games every weekend. Now, I didn't realize they were endless and meaningless games until I started driving my own kids to these <laughs> games. But here I was, sitting there thinking, I'm wiping my nose, and I got the freckles and the red hair. God, I got a game coming, I got the ball in my hand, and I'm playing with it, and I'm shooting in my mind and everything. And my dad is driving the car, he's going to the game, and he's worrying about the bills, worrying about how he's going to feed this family of four kids who are just huge and growing every single minute, and eating so much food. I mean, Jim, I'm sitting at lunch next to Jim Fitzpatrick over here, he's saying, dang, you do eat a lot of food. I'm glad I wasn't your mother. And so yeah, I can see the wheels grinding and the frustration, and he wants to be at home playing the piano, working in the garden, listening to the opera and all this sort of thing. So I look over and I can see the frustration that's interrupting with my dreams. And I said, Dad, I really appreciate all the great things you're doing for me and driving me to these games and providing me with this, with this opportunity. And Dad, one day I'm going to be in the NBA. And when you're in the NBA and you're the best player, I'm going to be that best player they call you the MVP and they give you a brand new free car. Dad, I'm going to go out, I'm going to win that car, and I'm going to give it to you, thanking you for driving me to all these games. And he's looking over at me and he goes, what's the NBA? <laughs> I'm proud to say that my dad still drives that car every day. And here I was as a 17-year-old guy, unlike my kids who were 21, 19, 17, and 15, I can't get them out of the house, these guys won't leave. When I graduated from high school, I hit that door running. I said, let's go, free, free, free at last. Let's go, baby, the world is ours. And I get out there, and here's Coach Wooden, 65 years old and the age of Nixon, saying, come on in here, Bill, you're mine for the next four years. And here Coach Wooden took us in under his wing and taught us every single thing we needed to know. Now, we thought we were really cool. We thought everything was great for us when we first started there as 17-year-old freshmen back in 1970. And the very first day of basketball practice, Coach John Wooden comes out there and he's all ready to go. He used to wear his basketball uniform to practice at 65 years old. He'd come out there limping and walking, squinting, trying, oh, you guys, you guys, come over here, let me show you how to do this stuff. Well, on the very first day, we get out there and we're ready to, to show him what it's like, how we play basketball. And he says, you new guys, you come with me, I got something to tell you. So we go, oh great, we're the chosen few, we're going to get these great gifts, this great magic word, this key, this pill that's going to make us the next generation of great basketball players at UCLA. 
under John Wooden, carrying on the tradition of Jabbar and Goodrich and Hazard and uh, uh, Wicks and Patterson and Rowe and all the great players. So we go in the locker room and he sits us down and we're so, we're so excited, wide-eyed, just like Brian is uh, out, out there at his luncheon. And we sit down and Coach sits down on the stool in front of us and he goes, guys, we go, yeah, Coach, what is it? He goes, this is how you put your shoes and socks on. And we looked at him and said, this guy's nuts. What's he talking about? So he proceeds to take off his shoes and socks, and he's got varicose veins everywhere, and, and hammer toes, and brown fungus on his toenails and everything, just gross as can be. And he said, now this guy's is what, how, this is how you do it. And we're going, this guy's nuts. But over the next four years, he proceeded to teach us everything, everything that we needed to know. Not about basketball, as I told you, but about life. Because his whole philosophy was that the lessons that you learn in sport, the lessons that you learn about loyalty and teamwork, uh, dedication, discipline, organization, friendship, competitive greatness, desire, enthusiasm, all the individual characteristics, those, those things will carry over into the rest of your life because everything is interchangeable. Those skills that you learn on the fields, on the courts, in the games, in the locker room, are the same things you're going to need later on in life. And then he came back to where we first started today. He said, guys, remember, it's not a game of size and strength. It's a game of timing, quickness, and positioning. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. And he was so right. Because if it, if it was how big you are, if it was just being big and strong, heck, Shaq and Wilt would have everything. Now, granted, Jack's got 121 million and Wilt's got 20,000, but there are other things out there. And believe me, we've been there and we can, we can get to that point of being on that special championship team where it all comes together. Now, Coach Wooden then took us through all his learning methods about how it comes down to skills and you have to have such great polished and developed skills that when the guy comes at you, you're just ready to go with anything that you need to have. We know, like in basketball, as in business, as in our lives, that as soon as things get perfect, everything changes. And everything just explodes. Basketball, life, constant transition. Everything happening all the time. The future, the issues uh, confronting this industry, the consolidations, where you're going to find the new customers, how it's all going to shake down. That's the same thing that we have in basketball, and it's the guys who look forward to that, to that moment of change, who are first there to anticipate, to dream about it. Like Brian right now is dreaming about going out here and busting that jumper in his dad's face in the backyard. Like you guys are thinking, okay, where am I going next with my company? What direction am I going to take? It's all the same. Now, I know I'm running really long here, but I, I, I want to close with one quick story. But I must warn you that as a reformed stutterer, you can't get me to be quiet. Because when I was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame back in 1993 in Springfield, Massachusetts, they said I had five minutes to give my acceptance speech, say my thank yous, and get out of there. Well, I'm the guy who missed more games in the history of basketball than anybody because of these legs. I played on the NBA rosters for 14 seasons. Because of the 30 operations that I had, I missed a total of nine and a half full seasons. Nine and a half full seasons missed out of 14. So when I was allotted five minutes of my Hall of Fame speech, 17 minutes into that speech, the guy from the NBA, knowing full well that I'd missed all these games, jumps up in the back of the room and he goes, come on, Walton, let's wrap this thing up. Your speech is lasting longer than your career. <laughs> 